It's a clip from that show from one of the early days, um, and I just sent it to Hugh, and it was four seconds long, and it was Ned Flanders saying, sometimes we have to say things that aren't true, and Todd Flanders interrupting, lies make baby Jesus cry. That's it. That's all it took. Mic drop, lies make baby Jesus cry. Hugh Hewitt has that in his phone now. And uh, I want to reiterate that now that I have his platform. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yes, indeed, as Hugh just said, Bob France coming to you from the ReliefFactor.com studios here in Cleveland, Ohio, my home base. Uh, AM 1420, The Answer. What a busy, busy day we have today. So good morning to you. When you get up today, um, there are going to be some very, very interesting developments. Pfizer trucks are steamrolling on highways around America right now. Uh, yesterday, they loaded up the trucks from their warehousing facility and their manufacturing facility, and the first versions of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, are rolled out. The FDA gave approval, of course, Thursday, Friday, and so Saturday and Sunday, uh, uh, Pfizer, we got them all ready to go, and they're on their way. According to a few different reports, between Pfizer's vaccine and Moderna's vaccine, as many as one third of Americans could be vaccinated by March, we are being told. So that's roughly 100 million of the 330, so not exactly of 33%, but you understand. If you round it down to 300 million Americans, maybe a third of them could be vaccinated by March. Uh, which, of course, would be a pretty extraordinary thing if you add those numbers to the number of individuals who have already tested positive for the virus and are, whose immune systems are continuing to build upon those antibodies even as we speak. Um, that could bring us closer and closer and closer to herd immunity, which uh, could, some people say is going to lead, uh, you know, be an end to this thing. The question is, is whether or not people trust the vaccine. and vaccines as a you know the, the the vaxxers if you will or the anti-vaxxers will talk about all vaccines in negative ways that's not what i'm doing here i'm not having that fight i am saying this particular vaccine because of the incredible and it really as as president trump goes down in history for a lot of things it could be argued that operation warp speed was his crowning achievement of his, his four years in, in the White House. And I know that he and a lot of other people still feel like it's not over yet about getting another four years in the White House. But we'll talk about that too, because today is, that's another reason why we start our day today in a very interesting place, because today the electors cast their votes for Joe Biden based on the outcome of the election as we know it now. Now, the lawsuit's still pending. <clears throat> appeals to the Supreme Court with their decision, all of that stuff we'll get to. But assuming for the sake of discussion that, that you know, Joe Biden becomes the next president, Donald Trump goes into history as a one-term four-year president, this could be his crowning achievement. And there are a lot of crowning achievements in Donald, Trump, Donald Trump's presidency. We ran through so many of them, and I know Hugh did. I listen every morning uh, of, of President Trump's term to, to look at the incredible progress toward peace in the Middle East, which we will update, by the way. And we had an update over the weekend as yet another Arab state agreed to a uh, uh, to terms, if you will, a peace accord, if you will, um, with Israel. Uh, that would be a crowning achievement for any president. No one has been able to do anything even close to this. Um, and I'm talking about including Republican presidents, including Democrat, Democratic presidents. Uh, this is just an amazing achievement for President Trump. So some could say that the rebirth of the economy uh, is, is something, you know, the lower taxes and, and doing everything that he and his policies have done in spite of extraordinary opposition and obstruction, all of those things you could say, you know, Hey, President Trump might not have been everybody's cup of tea. President Trump might not have portrayed himself the best or the presidency, et cetera. But my goodness, when you look at results, look at what was done in this country. But for the history books, I think we're going to look at the 2020, the year of the pandemic, and what was done to stop it. What was done to bring relief to the people of this country and even though it's this country was, you know, I, I am America first. I'm sorry. 
Well, not sorry, actually. Sorry, not sorry. No apologies. I am America first. Does that mean I want to leave our allies around the world hanging out to dry? Of course not. But this global pandemic, insofar as it affects our country, what was done to stop it? And you can talk about masking all day long, and you can talk about distancing all day long, and all of those things that were put into place, many of which I find to be uh, unconstitutional and, quite frankly, pointless. But the one thing you can say is that President Trump, in forging a private-public partnership between the private pharmaceutical companies supported by public dollars, governmental uh, 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 paid scientists joining with these private scientists to put together a vaccine that would be under normal circumstances a minimum a minimum two-year process for something like this novel coronavirus. A minimum. More likely, and President Trump said this over the weekend in an interview with Brian Kilmeade, he said it would be, under anybody else, a five-year process before, and he might be right. That might be a little bit exaggerated, maybe a little bit hyperbolic, yeah, but maybe not. But this vaccine has come to pass and come to fruition in less than a calendar year. Number one, it was done in less than a calendar year, about 10 months, really, going back to when this whole thing started in February, not sure when they started designing the vaccine. When the research began, it might have been even, you know, three quarters of a year. Maybe, they, you know, this whole thing started in February. Do we know how big it was going to be? Do we know how long we were going to have to deal with this? Not really. So maybe they didn't start this until March. Maybe they didn't start until April. I don't know. All I know is that Donald Trump told America in the fall of this year, prior to the election, that we will have these vaccines ready to be put into uh, physicians' hands and to be distributed around this country by the end of the year. He was mocked. He was he was laughed at. He was called a liar. He was, I mean, you name it, whatever you can say negative about a person as it pertains to that, it was said. He was accused of making something up about the vaccine in order to cover his failure to control this wild, out-of-control coronavirus through policy. You know, remember, if he would have just set a better example and worn a mask at the podium and all of his speeches and so on, if he wouldn't have held those super spreader events, you know, this whole thing could have been stopped. Wouldn't even have needed a vaccine. He's trying to lie about the uh, quick, quick uh, uh, nature of the development of this vaccine in order to cover his own failures. And they said this is going to be till late 2021 before vaccines would be ready at the earliest. Donald Trump was right. And this is something that I hope everybody remembers, regardless of how you feel about the vaccine. And I know that I believe, according to the most recent surveys, less than 50%, I think it was 46%, and I can double check that. According to surveys, polls, less than 50% of Americans say they'll roll up their sleeve and take this vaccine. Regardless of how you feel about it, the fact that you'll have that choice, the fact that this thing will exist is because of Donald Trump, his leadership, and his administration, and everyone should remember that. As we take our first time out this morning, I will tell you this. The fact that Pfizer knew it, the fact that Moderna knew it, that President Trump was right and it would be ready by the end of the year and didn't publicly say so, I think changed the course of the election. So much to talk about at 17 minutes after the top of the